In this tutorial, we're going to see how to select data from the underlying data source using VBA code and populate text boxes with that data on a Microsoft Access form. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, why would we want to use code to do that? It's easy enough to do it directly through the properties of the form in Microsoft Access. There may be instances where you want to take a little bit more control over the data that's being displayed to the user, or maybe your data is coming from multiple different underlying uh, data sources and you want to bring all of that data together on one form for the user to work with and then take more control over the updating of the data on the back end. It's easy to do with VBA code, not so easy to do through the Microsoft Access interface. So we'll see how to do that in this tutorial and to do that we're going to be using three main objects from the ADO uh, object library and those three objects are the connection object, uh, the command object, and the record set object. So just to get a, a, a good overview of how these objects work, we'll take a look at a, a quick uh, example here. So our data is on the left, of course, in the database. We want to populate a form on the right with that data. We'll need to use the three objects that I just mentioned to you, and this kind of gives us an idea of how those three objects work in, in concept. The connection object that we'll be creating first creates the bridge between our form and the underlying data. So think of it that way. In order to get anything back and forth uh, across, we need to build the bridge first, then the connection object is going to act as that bridge. Next, we'll need our command object. And the command object you can think of as request for data that we send over the bridge. So we're going to ask for data either from a particular table, or from a query, or from a SQL statement that we write. Now the return that we get back is the record set object and so when the data comes back it comes back in the form of a record set which we can then use to uh, populate our form. Now again that's a really simplified explanation of how these three objects work but it kinda gives us a good basis for writing our code and understanding what we're writing to know that we first we have to create the connection object in order to send things across then we can send across our command object which is our request for data and what we'll get back is the record set object. Alright, so here's the form that we're going to be connecting to data through VBA code. And the first thing that we'll do is take a look at the properties of this form. So I'm going to go into design view, take a look at the record source property of the form, and you can see that it is empty. So it's not currently connected to any data. So to write our code, I'm going to go into the VBA editor. It takes us directly into the code module for that form. And right here at the top of the code module, in the general declaration section, I'm going to declare a variable to hold our connection object. Now we can give it any name we want. I'm just going to call it CON. Now the reason we're declaring it up in the general declaration section is because uh, the scope that we need for this variable uh, it needs to be available to the entire module uh, because the forms load event is going to access this connection object and as well uh, the text boxes on the form are going to use the record set object that comes from this connection and we're going to be using buttons to move back and forth through the data so we want to declare the connection object up in the uh, general declaration section which gives it this module level scope. Right, The next thing we want to do is to actually instantiate this connection object so declaring the variable is the first step the next step we need to instantiate it or actually create it so to do that we go to the form load event so as soon as the form loads up, we'll create our connection object. And we do that by using the set keyword. And we set the variable that we created earlier equal to an instance of a connection. Now we can create connections in lots of different ways. If this were an external database, I could uh, create uh, some specific parameters here that would actually connect me to that external database. But we're going to connect to the data in the current database. And the way that you do that in Access 2007 is to set your variable equal to an object called currentproject.connection. Alright, so now when the form loads we will have an active uh, connection uh, in order to work with. In essence we've created that bridge that we talked about earlier. Right, the next thing that we want to do is to create our record set object. So again, because we wanted to have a scope that will allow it to be accessed throughout the forms module, I'm going to declare it up here in the general declaration section and I'm going to call it RS product. And of course we're declaring it as a record set object. 
Right, the next thing we'll do is create a new procedure. So I'm going to go to Insert on the menu bar and Procedure, and I'm going to call it Display. This is kind of going to kind of be the workhorse of our uh, code we're creating. This new procedure is the one that will actually populate all the different text boxes with the data from the database. So I'm going to reference the first text box on the form, which I know is called TXT Prod ID, and I'm going to call it Set Focus Method to move the cursor to it so that I can change its text property. And I'm going to set the text property equal to the data that's come back from our record set and the field in the record set called LNG product ID. And you can see that when we reference a field within the record set, we use uh, the bang or the exclamation point to separate the record set name and the field name. All right, and then I'm just going to repeat that process for all of the other text boxes on the form. All right, so you can see that I've completed the rest of my code, and I really just repeated the same process for each text box. I called the set focus method of the text box so that I'm able to change the text property, and then I set the text property equal to the record set uh, and the field name from the record set that I want to populate that text box with, separated by the exclamation point. Uh, once we've done all that, our next step is to actually instantiate the record set object. We created a variable up in the general declaration section to hold the record set object, but we had never actually created it. So for that, we're going to go back to the form load event, and I'm going to set the record set object equal to a new record set. All right. We're then going to take that record set and call its open method and pass to it some arguments that are required. So the first one is the source, and that really is what data do we want to bring back from the database. Now earlier I told you that uh, that really represented uh, the command object, the data that we want to get back from the data source. Now the uh, ADO object model is sometimes referred to as a flat object model, and that really just means that we have the ability to create uh, one, two, or all three of the objects that we uh, discussed earlier uh, depending on our needs. Now in my case I'm going to uh, not create a command object explicitly but allow ADO to create one for me implicitly by passing in a SQL statement here. It'll still create a command object from it uh, and I'll still be able to get back the data that I want but what I won't have is a variable that's holding that command object for me to change the properties of or call methods on. So while it's quicker and easier doing it implicitly, it gives us less control over the object that we're not explicitly creating. Lots of different ways to create these objects implicitly or explicitly. really just depends on your needs. I'm not so concerned with the command object itself. I'm going to let ADO create one for me by passing in a SQL statement here. And I'm going to create a real basic one here and just uh, select all fields from the table called TBL products. Sorry, actually TBL product. Uh, the second argument that it's going to ask for is the connection object, which we have. It's called CON. Remember, it's pointing to the current database. It then asks us for a cursor type. Uh, I'm going to select the most flexible one, which is AD Open Dynamic. Just gives us the ability to move backward and forward through the data as uh, the user wants. And then it asks us for a lock type. Um, gives us several different options here. I'm going to select the one called AD Lock Batch Optimistic. And without going into a, a, a deep discussion, which would take a bit of time as to the difference between all of these different locking options, uh, I'll just give you a brief definition of the one we're using. Um, remember that as the user is looking at this data, they may want to change the data or edit it and while they're working with that record, someone else may be also accessing the same record at the same time. So we have to tell Access what to do in that case. By using the uh, uh, lock optimistic, and let me just make a quick change here. I wanted AD lock optimistic, not AD lock batch optimistic. Uh, by using the AD lock optimistic uh, lock type, what we're saying in essence is we're optimistic that while we're working with the record, no one else is going to be working with it. So we're not going to lock the record until the user actually tries to save it. So they can be editing all that they want, 
Uh, when they click Save, Access will lock the record, make the changes, and then unlock it. What if we're wrong? Well, it means that someone else could be editing the record at the same time our current user is editing it, and their changes uh, could be applied first. So, in essence, the user uh, we're currently working with might be looking at old data. Uh, there are several different locking options, and it really just depend, depends on how many people are accessing your database, which one you'll want to use. But we're going to use AD Lock Optimistic. Alright, the last thing we need to do here, now that we've created our record set object and implicitly created our command object, is we need to call our display method from the form load event. That will jump down, start uh, setting focus to our text boxes, and now filling them up with the data that came back from our record set. Okay, so let's take a look at the result of our code. I'm going to go ahead and save what we've done so far, switch back to Microsoft Access, and take a look at our form in form view. You can see that the data was retrieved from the record set and the first record has now populated our text boxes. We have one problem though in that the user isn't able to move through the records. You can see that the standard navigation buttons that we would typically have in an access form are gone. They've been suppressed on this form and the reason for that is because we're using code to populate the text boxes so now it's our responsibility to kind of recreate that functionality with these command buttons that have been added to the form. So that's the next thing we'll take care of. I'm going to switch back to design view and go to the first button and its click event and use the code builder to go back into the code window and write a couple of lines of code to move the user to the first record in the record set. It's actually pretty easy to do because the record set has a method called move first. We just need to call it. We also then need to call our other sub procedure called display that we created earlier to repopulate the text boxes. The reason for that is because we've now moved to a different record in the record set in memory but that doesn't automatically repopulate the text boxes with the values from the new record. So we call the display method to take care of that for us. Now I'll do the same thing for the previous button. I'll call the record sets move previous method. One thing we have to be careful for here though is that if the user is on the first record and they click the previous button they might actually move uh, off of the record set itself. Uh, moving past the first record will cause an error and so what we need to do is uh, test for a property on the record set called EOF, or I'm sorry, BOF, beginning of file. This is a Boolean property, so we test to see whether it's true or not. And if it is true, we know that well, the, the user has actually moved past the uh, first record in the record set. So we'll display a message box to him and say, you are on the first record. And then we'll move them back to that first record. Because remember, they have actually moved past that. And then the last thing we'll do is call the display method again to repopulate the text boxes. We'll take care of our last button here. By calling the move last method of the record set. And then our display sub procedure. And then finally, we'll take care of the last button, our move next. Again, we have to be careful here because if they're on the last record, they will actually move off of the record set. So to test for that, we look at a property called EOF or end of file and test to see if it's true. If it is, we know they've gone too far. So we will display a quick message box here for them first and say you are on the last record and then move them back to that last record since they have gone past it and then again we will call the display method. Alright we've taken care of all of our buttons let's go ahead and save our code
switch back to access, we'll go into form view and see if our buttons work. All right, you can see as I move next or previous, the records are updating. And if I click last, I do go to the last record in the record set. And if I try at that point to go next, I get the message box that I am on the last record. And when I click on OK, Access does put me back on that last record. Same thing if we go first and click previous, we're prevented from going too far. Right, so in this tutorial we saw how to connect an access form to an underlying data source through VBA code and how to use uh, code to also allow the users to move through the records one at a time.